Tell us what you're drinking, Patrick. Well, I came I came into Phil's house and he said, what would you like to drink? And so I said, the Phil special, not knowing what I would get. Turns out it's just corn in a cup. Hi, I'm Phil. Hi, I'm Kevin. Hey, I'm Henry. Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Patrick. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're gonna teach you how to make Chanko Nabe. Chanko Nabe? Chanko. Chanko. But every time you say something in Japanese, it sounds far more Japanese than anything I am capable of saying. <laughs> Chanko Nabe. This is uh, also known as Sumo Stew. As in the sumo wrestlers of sumo wrestling, the national sport of Japan. This is the dish that makes those guys get big. And so we too are going to eat this stew in order to satisfy our hunger for the... And get thick. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've got a very nice Dutch oven. And from my understanding you're not supposed to use Dutch ovens to make soups, but... That's what we're gonna do tonight. And we're gonna start by making dashi stock. We've made dashi stock before, but we've never made it with those crazy anchovies. And here they are, dried anchovies. They look great. These are gonna give a fishy flavor to this stock, as you might imagine. Okay, don't smell them. So, let's throw them in. You need about a cup for this great big old pot. And if you get a few more, who cares? I really have no other use for this ingredient. Looks great. If you don't know what dashi is, it's a seafood stock and it's pretty much always some kind of fish thing with kombu, which is seaweed. And part of the reason why kombu is so great is that it, it's covered in natural MSG, which is that, that white powder. So all of that is natural MSG. It's gonna give you savory flavor, the umami as it were. Don't wash your kombu off because if you do, all that MSG goes bye bye. You know, these are kind of small sheets, so I'm gonna use two. We made dashi before. If you want to learn another way to make it, click this link somewhere on the video. Here in this sink that definitely has nothing else in it, I'm filling it up with cold water. And we're going to give it a little bit of a soak before we boil it. And that's just to let it, you know, rehydrate, loosen up. Reanimate the fish. I hope to God we're not reanimating the fish. But yeah, we're going to leave that go. Optimally, you'd let it go for two hours. So we're going to do it in two PGC hours. Two minutes. Actually, five, probably like 15 minutes. <laughs> We'll be back. Welcome to tetanus. <laughs> okay, our uh, our kombu and fishies are just hanging out here in the old pot, no problem. We are gonna start by making the chicken balls. And the chicken meatballs are probably the most iconic meat that we're gonna put in this dish. Kevin explained that the sumos on game day eat the chickens because they're on two feet and sumos gotta keep both feet on the ground. So there's something cosmic and you know, important about that. Reverent to other people's cultures. So I'm going to chop the vegetables that go in the balls. I'm going to chop the onions. Kevin's going to grate some ginger. And then these fine lads, Patrick and Hank, are going to make the balls. The meat's good. Like me some meat. All right. I'm removing the tops of these green onions. Some people call these scallions. This is one bunch, which is uh, seven green onions in this case, thinly slicing them. What are you doing, Kevin? I'm trying to not get tetanus. I'm just peeling ginger. It's a pretty decently sized ginger knob. We're not gonna put all of that in, probably. We'll have to see how it looks when it grates. Carefully put the scallions into this bowl. Don't do this just floating over the floor like we are right now. Thank you, Patrick. We'll You're get, a good help. Thank we'll you. get some individual ones for you. I'm grating ginger. So over time, as you grate that, you can like use a finger to like push it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really awful thing. <laughs> right. The ginger board is a terrible appliance. Also, if you have a six pack of anything, make sure you save the planet Help, by I'm chopping a... your, your friend's <laughs> fingers off. I'm a crab, please. Take that and see turtle. <laughs> don't cut Patrick. He's free! Jesus, please don't. I'm trying. <laughs> <I'm> not... <laughs> if you want to try hard at cooking, why are you watching this show? John. Being the enthusiastic enjoyer of Japanese things that he is, requested that I once again try to make the star cuts that some people do in the mushrooms. So he showed me a video, which is you do a shallow cut like that, 
All right, there's my first cut. It's not that great. Here's my second cut. Look at all the mushroom we're wasting. All right, here's my third cut. And there you have, that's not the worst thing ever. I could probably clean that up. It's special. So there's the one mushroom that will be featured that way. I'm not cutting any more like that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I actually don't think that mushrooms of that size are enjoyable to eat, so I might just chop up the rest of the mushrooms. All right, so I got some carrots, peeling them. These are four carrots for our big, big old pot of soup. And you could use more or less, depending on how much you like carrots, but I feel like four is a pretty pretty large amount. And in fact, I saw some suggestions, because Japan just seems to get off on doing weird things to vegetables, that you cut the carrots into coins and then use a cookie cutter to turn them into flowers. And you know what I'm gonna do? That. No! <laughs> I'm gonna not do that! John wanted me to cut the carrot like I know oh guys, what I'm doing. Over here. Thank you, Patrick. So, I, this is how John taught me how to cut carrots. Is that you just keep turning it around and cutting it on a diagonal, and eventually you'll have chopped carrots. And I'm not really sure if I'm doing it right, because I just assume I'm not. This time I'm starting from the bottom. Now we're here. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Took my joke before I could make it. Sorry, no, okay, but you no, it. no, no, it was good. Know, it was, okay. it was good. I'll, I'll say it, and then you can finish it. <laughs> okay. Um, we started from the the bottom, and now we're here. Yeah, good job, man. Good job. <laughs> good job. You see this right here? This is ground chicken. All dark. That's about oh, a pound. And it goes into a bowl of. Look at this. It's it's uh, it's. it's the green onions, the scallions, if you want to call them the scallions, and we got the and we got the, the ginger. It's all mixed in here. How much ginger? Um, you're, we're talking like half a knob. It's like this big. It's like oh. this big, this much. Take this, put this in here. All right, that's it. We're done. You know what they call this <laughs> in, in the the market industry? This thing right here. The meat diaper. The diaper. They call it the diaper. They call it the diaper. Yeah, that's gross. Add some salt to the meat. Nice salt. Now, before you go to town, I've got gloves if you want. It's too late. No. It is too late? Yeah. yeah. You already I've already touched it. Touched it. <laughs> All right, you ready? You ready to start? Get the, the meat? Please. Oh. Please. You are yeah, literally meat. killing me right Meatballs now. Meatballs are all about the negative space. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna destroy this now. Okay. Oh yeah, look at that. Flip it over and it's, this is chicken, which is kind of weird for meatballs. Something so American. Chicken and... meatballs are weird, man. Get with the times. He's weird. I'm with the times. <laughs> Holy crap, there's a lot of green onion in here. All right, uh, well, uh, we're ready to just start forming the balls. Right, no. So. I was given strict instructions to make balls but I was also given even more strict instructions by Kev to make stars, so. Star balls? Stars. We're gonna try and make some stars. Meat star! Damn good star, too. Do you want them bigger? I think, no, I think that would be the, oh, the oh, okay, size. so smaller. Smaller balls. Okay, smaller balls, got it. That size is good. We'll be back when we're done. I'm with the times. I'm chopping these mushrooms into quarters because that's my preferred mushroom size. And you can see that there's dirt on them, but I'm going to wash them after I cut them because I'm dumb. These are criminal mushrooms. You could use shiitake or maitake or inaki or any other kind of key that you'd like. This is approximately, uh, oh no, we've talked about this before. You can't estimate the amount of mushrooms you have once you cut them. Can't be done. Oh, I can estimate that, man. That's one bowl. But there's scallions underneath. So that's I, three I, quarters I, of a bowl no, of mushrooms. Shut up, man. I would say 10 to 12. I think we can definitely say that there were more than two mushrooms. Look at those balls. Oh, that's, oh, please stop. Just about to mince some garlic. Three. I chopped a Napa cabbage. There it is in that bowl. Napa. That's one small Napa cabbage. Like one pound. I was very happy that I did not have four extra pounds of Napa cabbage. There's a sack of shrimp in there. So typically what you would do, but these have already been cut, is you would, you would run the knife down the, the spine here. It's already been done. And then inside there is usually like the vein, which you can like kind of just pick out with the knife or whatever. And then you just pull the, you pinch at the tails, or the tails, the legs, and the meat comes out the top there. And then you can even do that in the bottom of the tail and you get the rest of it. And so you get a perfect little shrimpy boy. We actually managed to let this sit for a little while. Almost an hour, I would say. Absolutely two hours in PGC time. So we're gonna bring that to a boil and we're not gonna cook it that long because it doesn't take that long to do. And then we're gonna pull this all out and we'll have our nice Dashi stock. That's all to report right now. <laughs>
All right, this stock's done, you can tell, because it's kind of that greenish color. In terms of actually boiling, it was just like maybe two minutes. You really don't need that long. Also, we soaked it for a while, that was good. If you want to be like really careful, you could run this whole thing through a sieve, or you could just be slightly careful and just fish out the fish, which is what I'm doing. One fish, two fish. Patrick's gonna eat one of these fish. Shut up, Patrick. Oh my god, that smells, smells like good. hot fish. He's eating it. Actually, it looks pretty good. You want one? Yeah, I'll try one. Kevin. No. Cheers. No. It's good. That's good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's legitimately. It's, it's, that's actually really good. Fine. Yeah, I got another one. I'm happy for all of you. What an unremarkable experience. <laughs> wow, who would have thought? Take a bite of that seaweed. The kombu. That's less good. That's less good. What do you think? Is it good? No. Okay, all right. So we got our stock, and now it's back up to a boil, somewhat. And we're going to soft boil some eggs. And I'm going to use this, this strainy to lower them in without hurting my hands. And I'm doing a few of these. We uh, have several people here eating. And I think I'm cooking eight eggs, unless I can't count. So we're soft boiling them. Never done that on the show before. So I don't know what I'm doing. But we're gonna cook them about six minutes. All right, we soft boiled our eggs. Oh, one of them exploded. Oh no. Oh, no. Somebody exploded. That's okay. Oh, oh God. <laughs> avert, avert your eyes. You put them in ice water. And if you have ever have this kind of experience, don't worry, man. Maybe, did I put the lid on? Well, that was dumb. I shouldn't have done that. All right, we'll get the uh, egg remnants out as much as we can. No problem. All right, so eggs go off to the side. You don't need them. Now it's cooking time. We need pork chopped. We need tofu chopped. Any volunteers for pork and tofu chopping? Sarah wants to do it. Thank you for your time. We really don't need that much pork. Just very thinly slice one of those pork chops. Maybe two. What kind of tofu is that? Fire. It's go a... Extra firm. But when you want to be to <laughs> extra firm. Patrick likes his partners to be good friends. Not extra firm. Okay, it's time to season the broth. Here's some mirin. It's sweet cooking seasoning. You put some of that in the broth. A couple of tablespoons. Actually, the rest of the bottle. Next, you put in some sake. How old is this sake, you ask? I don't know. Is it vinegar? No, it's one. It's fucking sake. Yeah, is it vinegar now? No. Put a little bit of. As thin as you can do it. I am slicing pork very thinly. Sarah, you are doing such a good job. Thank you. Tell me I'm doing a good job. Patrick, you are doing such a good job. Are you cutting the tofu in the container? I'm saving a dish. What a mad <laughs> lad. I even I even cut it this way too, so. This way and that way? So then I, it's like a thinner piece than it would be <coughs> a thick block. You gotta put a little bit of Kroger soy sauce into the stuff. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. All right, let's add a little salt, a little sea salt full of minerals. All right, next we're gonna add our vegetables. So these are the mushrooms and the scallions. And I'm gonna, I have a hot take prediction. We're gonna have to pull some of this stock out because I don't think it's gonna fit back in there. But that one mushroom's gonna look pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, I think, is that, where's that one mushroom? I, I hope you get that mushroom. <laughs> Next, add the cabbage and the carrots. Oh my god, we're too full. Now watch this, this is what's called a pro cooker move. You're too full? Use a bowl. Set it aside. Okay, so we got our vegetables in here. We're gonna give them a cook, as it were. Cooking in a pot like this is called boiling. Here how did we, how did we f***ing explode an egg? I think these are soft boiled, because the other ones, they feel, they feel boiled, soft boily. Oh shit, we gotta put some of uh, these flavorings in. This is garlic and ginger. It's kind of a lot, and generally speaking, when I think it comes to Japanese cuisines, they're restrained and they're like, don't put too much flavor in there. But Kevin did this work, so that's what's going in. This ginger, that garlic. All right, so it's gonna take a minute. We're gonna get that cooking, boiling. Hold on, we'll be back. Everyone here is more tipsy than they expected to be. Literally everyone. All right, we've cooked the vegetables a little bit. Now we're gonna add the meatballs. And we're gonna add the meatballs. I don't know how. <laughs> how will we do it? By taking these tongs and putting them in. You can see that I'm delicately putting 
the balls into the liquid. And that is to cook the balls in the liquid. You can tell I've done this before. You can see that we're succeeding, right? Because you can't see a single one of those chicken balls. Why are you saving the star for last? I'm a little worried about it. I think that it became a long star. What about the one green onion? Thank you, Kevin. That was his life's purpose. We're gonna let those cook for a minute or two before we add the next meat to the stew. Ooh. Ooh. Hey. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Here is some chopped pork loin. One pork chop is what we put in. Yum, yum, yum. Next, we add the tofu. One package. You could add less if you're afraid of becoming changed by the tofu, like my brother is. All right, Henry. Henry the Hand the Hank is putting this fish in this pot. The fish just leaked everywhere. Yeah, it's fish water. Okay. Is your nickname actually Henry the Hand? Uh, it should be. Put the fish in the pot, please. Okay, hold on, I gotta open the fish. It's it's Pacific Cod, previously frozen. It's the good shit, 0. 0.68. Okay. I paid a premium price for that, yeah. more than I wanted to. Yeah, it's it's really good. White, flaky fish. Where can I put Just this? pour the fish water in there. Oh. Yeah, there we go. It'll give it a depth of fish flavor. Dude, look at this filet. That's a hell You're of- You're spilling it on the floor. Oh, Christ. Just f***ing put it in! For Christ's sake, Just what? put it in, Hank! That's all you- And- <laughs> oh. <laughs> This guy. Got it. This guy. Go wash your hands. There's the fish. Go wash your hands, kid. Hit the showers. All right, we're moving our fish around a little bit, and then we're gonna have our shrimp boy add the shrimp. Shrimp boy add the shrimp. This is... I'm trying to even... A funny way to do it. Imagine gaining 600 pounds by eating just bowl after bowl of this. It could be you. That might be my dream. It's kind of like a paella. All Let's right. See. Some recipes call for noodles. And typically it would be udon noodles, which Lucky's Market did not have. So instead I got these Ha Kien stir fry noodles, which are just egg noodles already cooked. I think that's going to be close enough for us. And we, being the culinary masterminds that we are, are putting noodles in the stew, but also serving it with rice, so that we can become sumo wrestlers bigger, better, and faster. I feel like this pot is so full that did we even put noodles in it at all? I guess we. I guess we had. Gotta add another one. Okay. Finny, you were just you were just thinking about how many wasn't actually home. Nothing happened. Okay, just gonna let this cook for a final few moments. Breaking up the fish a little bit, but there it is. In all its glory, we gotta we gotta peel an egg at least, at least one. This is clearly soft boiled. I can feel the softness inside. Great. All right, so here's our food. It's all fully cooked. That's what your goal was, right? I'm gonna grab some nudes. That's, that's too many nudes. Yeah. There they go. Okay, and then we're gonna use one of these guys which is called a ladle. You know, I think that's probably everything. Not totally sure if we got pork or not, but my hands are burning underneath this bowl. Here I am cutting the egg, the soft boiled egg. Actually, that's really nice. That's perfectly soft. It's not even going everywhere. Looks pretty nice. Maybe we could serve it with rice. I kind of just imagined that the way that this food became was like, look, I need to get big, so let me just eat everything available in Japan. <laughs> That chicken meatball is awesome. It's really good. The whole thing needs a little bit more salt, in my opinion, but I like things salty. This is good, man. This tastes like really clean. Just like most Japanese food, it tastes super clean. There's nothing crazy in there, but I imagine if you had like a Herculean appetite, you could eat probably nine bowls of this. I definitely don't have a Herculean appetite. My appetite is probably like, probably like Bob Dole. I could eat some, and that's what I'm gonna eat. Thank you. I was gonna follow the footsteps of Phil. It's never let me down. There was that one. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. It does oh, need some salt, nice. but this is delicious. It looks very hot. Dude, every every time I do this, I burn my mouth, and then I gotta painfully say, "I'm <laughs> I'm not doing it this time. I'm not gonna burn my mouth. I'm burning my mouth again. Where's the? I put. Hoisin or hosan or whatever, however you say it, and some of that Japanese seven spice. It's got more spices than Chinese does. It's, got him. I'm gonna try it, man. It looks good. Awesome. Ooh, man. That's good. That's really good. I like it. My advice don't skip that soft boiled egg. That egg is so good in there. I'm I'm skipping like the eggs. Egg. That's okay. Some people weren't born to be made to enjoy eggs. This is how you do it. 
or one way of doing it. We'll see you next time on www.youtube.com slash prettygoodcooking. Okay, bye.